it's, it's a privilege for me being here. And I appreciate very much the invitation of the Institute of Bioengineering of Catalonia for this lecture. It's for me always a pleasure to come here to the campus of the UPC, where I met a lot of uh, engineers and people. And, and it's a pleasure always to come here. So thank you for inviting me. Well, it's difficult uh, to talk about uh, your specialty in just one hour. Uh, I'll try to, to show you some of the technologies we use in our practice, the daily clinical practice. And this is uh, the outline of my lecture today. First of all, I'd like to, to give some words about our specialty, which is not very well known by the general public. Then uh, I will focus my speech in the diagnosis. After that, uh, technology in treatments. And at the end, some words about the future trends and our future needs of technology in our specialty. Well, uh, oral maxillofacial surgery is a topographic specialty, which means that it is defined by the specific anatomical region we deal with, the face, the mouth, and the neck. As you can see, here is a very complex anatomical region and there is a lot of medical specialties involved in treatment in this area. Not only maxillofacial surgeons, but also dentists, also ophthalmologists, otolaryngologists, in the posterior aspect of this region, the cervical spine, orthopedic surgeons, also neurosurgeons. Uh, and this means that uh, most of the, the cases we have to, to treat in this area uh, we need to work in a multidisciplinary fashion. Always uh, collaborate with another specialist when we uh, treat patients from this area. Well, most of you, the first contact with a maxillofacial surgeon would be wisdom tooth. We do a lot of uh, surgeries. And let me introduce a little bit uh, our specialty because we, we do many other things apart from the wisdom uh, tooth extraction. For example, we treat uh, diseases of the orbit. The orbit is the cavity in which the, the eyeball is located. We treat fractures in this area, also different uh, kinds of injuries, and also tumors in cooperation with the ophthalmologists. We also treat um, diseases in the nose and the perinasal sinuses together with the otolaryngologists. We treat traumatic injuries, we treat tu uh, tumors, we treat deformities of this area, and also infections. Of course, we treat many uh, pathologies in mouth and teeth, together with the dentist. We do a lot of oral surgery, like wisdom tooth. We also work uh, with dental implants. We do most of the complex surgeries with uh, dental implants. We also treat uh, tumors of the mouth, of the mouth, of the tongue, and of course infections uh, in this area, which uh, can be uh, very uh, serious sometimes. Of course, in now these days is at stake. We treat we treat salivary gland pathology, tumors of the salivary glands. Most of you know that uh, the coach of. Barcelona Football Club is affected for tumor of the parotid gland, which is this salivary gland here. We also treat injuries of the facial nerve, which is located inside the parotid gland. We also treat stones in the salivary glands, tumors, of course, and also infections in this area. The neck is a, another important uh, place where we treatments, especially in tumors, but also in congenital malformations and also uh, congenital cysts that we can found in all this complex area, which have the connections between the central nervous system and the rest of the body. So we have a lot of blood vessels here, a lot of nerve connections. We also have uh, the, the, the first part of the digestive tract located in this area. So it is a very complex area, and uh, we, it is necessary to know uh, a 
a very precise uh, uh, anatomy of this area. We also treat the facial skeleton in cases of trauma, <coughs> fractures of the bones of the face, fractures of the mandible, fractures of the nose, of the zygoma, and also we treat malformations, so uh, cases of uh, uh, deve developmental uh, alterations that uh, need to be corrected <coughs> surgically. Also tumors, of course, and bone diseases affecting the bones of the facial skeleton. The temporomandibular joint, which, which is the joint that connects the, the, the mandible with the, crani with the cranial vault. We treat uh, traumatic injuries of this uh, joint. Also, we treat internal derangements, uh, diseases of the cartilage inside the, this joint. Also, we treat tumors in this area. And in cases in which we have a, a complete destruction uh, by degenerative disease or after trauma, it is necessary the total replacement of the joint with a prosthesis. Uh, we also do cosmetic surgery, just cosmetic of the face, rhinoplasty, blepharoplasty, mm -hmm. surgeries of the eyelids, facelift, and all, all other cosmetic treatments like uh, fillers, uh, botox, and uh, treatments like this. Well, we'll focus now on uh, the, the technology for the diagnosis, the diagnosis of the diseases and injuries in this area. We have a lot of image technologies, starting with uh, the plain radiographs, computer tomography. We also have now the Combin CT, which is a, a variation of the axial CT scan. We also have M MRI, magnetic resonance, Images. We also use the echography, especially in the salivary glands. We also use um, gammagraphy, which is a technology that uh, uh, marks uh, molecules with uh, radioactive isotopes to identify specific cells in this anatomical area, which is the fundamental of the PET-CT. And uh, all the, these uh, technologies allow us to have a model of the real patient. An anatomical model. We want to work with a patient virtual model. The first model we have is the model we obtain by segmentation of the CT scan. But with uh, digital sources, we can combine uh, images and information coming from different different uh, sources. And this is what we are now doing. The first one is the PET CT which is a technology that uh, marks the, with a radioactive isotope, the, the glucose, and we can identify the uh, malignant cells in the three dimensions of a space. If we combine this uh, gammography with a CT scan, we can locate in a very precise fashion where are located the malignant cells. This is the at uh, CT, which is very important in the follow-up of patients affected of cancer. We can identify uh, very <coughs> early what are the metastases and treat uh, properly. But we can also combine these uh, images coming from diff different digital sources, for example, from the MRI and CT, which is very interesting when we are uh, trying to dissect uh, a tumor like this in which we can combine the, the CT, with, uh, which have a very good resolution of bone, with the MRI, which have a very good resolution of soft tissues. And now we can combine both images and uh, found in, uh, the, lo the exact location of tumor and uh, to for, for the planning of the surgical access way to remove this tumor. But uh, we can go further and combine more and more uh, digital sources for uh, a composite model of the patient, of the anatomy of the patient. The most uh, complex uh, models are done in dentistry, especially for implant, uh, dental implant surgeries. In this case, you have a composite model obtained with a CT, 
this is the uh, the model of a projected prosthesis. Uh, this prosthesis is done with uh, barium sulfate, which is radiopack, and can be uh, visible in the CT scan. But we also can add to this model the surface scan of the of the gum of the patient or teeth of the patient, and also we can uh, superimpose to this model the picture of the patient. So we we can have. As you can see here, a very precise model, a 3D model of the anatomy of the patient that we can play with it. We can make uh, uh, simulations of treatments and it is very useful for a predictable uh, and successful treatment. As you can see here, he, this is the surface model of the, the, the plaster cast obtained of the patient and then this model, 3D model, is an STL, and is STL5, we can superimpose the picture of the patient. We can switch on and switch off the different uh, models, and depending of, of what we are planning, we, we are interested in watching what, where is located the bone, we can uh, see where is located the, the proper gum, for the emergence profile of the implant, and we can also uh, draw the nerve to avoid damaging uh, this structure, which is uh, uh, which have to be protected because if we damage this nerve, the patient will have an anesthesia of the lower lip. In these composite models, we can also uh, combine. CAD-CAM models. For example, this is, these are CAD-CAM models of the implants we use in treatment of these patients. We can place virtually dental implants in this mandible. <coughs> we can also uh, have a, a look of the axis of each one, and we can uh, parallelize all the implants, which is uh, better for uh, the prosthesis, the final prosthesis. We can also uh, switch on the, the projected uh, prosthesis and now we can turn the model to see the places where it's expected to have the connection between the implant and the final prosthesis. All these technologies make, uh, make uh, these treatments more predictable. Here you can see the emergence profile of the dental implants and it it is very important because we need uh, the emergence of the of the prosthesis through this white uh, gum, which is uh, the good one, the proper one for a stable result result over the time. And now, what is uh, how can we transfer this very precise um, planning we have done in the computer to the real patient? We do this, uh, this transfer through these drill guides. These drill guides are designed in combination with a surgical tri with uh, different uh, tubes that uh, have all the information about the depth, the axis of the implant we have to place in, in, every, in every case. This is the surgical tri. The surgical tri is just a combination of tubes uh, that uh, adapt the different diameters of drills we use in treatment. Here you can see this is the drill guide adapted. It is very important to, to adapt properly this drill guide to the patient and then we just have to drill through these tubes uh, to the top. We change these tubes according of the diameter of the drill and finally through the same drill guide, we can put the dental implant. And once we remove the drill guide, the implant is uh, placed exactly where we planned before surgery. Another important um, technology uh, for planning is done in uh, orthodontic surgery. Orthodontic surgery is a group of surgical techniques that correct deformations of the face affecting not only the, the, the facial appearance of the patient but also the occlusion, the dental occlusion. 
this is an overview of, of treatments. Here you can see that uh, uh, overgrowth of the mandible. We, we work uh, together with the orthodontist, that orthodontics uh, correct the shape of the dental arches, and then with surgery, we correct the, the overgrowth of the mandible, pushing back the mandible, and pushing forward the maxilla, as you can see here. This is a, a surgical treatment. This is, these are titanium mini plates we use in surgery. And this is the final appearance, correcting not only the, the profile of the patient, but also the dental occlusion. Uh, now <coughs> we use a 3D imaging technology for the planning of these uh, cases. As you can see here, we can have <coughs> a 3D model of the uh, skull and the mandible of the patient, and we can apply to this uh, model different calculations in comparing the, the parameters and the measurements of the, of the patient we have with a database of uh, normal uh, population uh, measurements. This is very useful because uh, these, uh, these malformations are not symmetrical. In, in, in most uh, cases, we have an different angulation asymmetries. The left side is not equal at the right side. And it is very important for us to, uh, to perform a planning in 3D. For that, we, we apply um, terminology obtained from from the uh, the, uh, the astronautic for 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 say Joe Pitch and, and Roll, and we can move all the bones we want to, to operate in the three dimensions of the space. We can correct the jaw, we can correct the pitch, and we can correct the the roll. Obtaining uh, a perfect symmetry of the patient in our workstation that can that we can transfer later on to the operating room. Now we also have software that uh, that can combine these movements we do in the facial skeleton, and we can have a prediction of the soft tissues. Now, this is at a stake these days because these uh, predictions are very, very difficult because the response of uh, soft tissues to the movements of the bones are not uh, very well known. And this is one of the, the, the things that have to be improved in the future. But it is very interesting for us and also to, to show the patient what, uh, what we want to do with surgery to see what happened with the face of the patient when we move the bones forward, backward, or whatever. The way we transfer this uh, planning to the real patient is very similar that we, we do with implant dentistry. We use these splints. These splints are very uh, very easy to do. This is the, the, the final position of the maxilla, and this is the previous position of the mandible. We make this splint and we operate first the maxilla. We put this splint on the lower arch of the, of the patient and we immobilize the maxilla in the new position. And after that, when the, the maxilla is in place, we move backward the mandible to obtain the proper position. This was the, the traditional way we do this planning, <coughs> but now it is the same when we're using we're using, we are using computer technology. The only difference is that these splints are done with stereolithographic uh, technologies. This is a real, a real example. There's a, a patient that have, as you can see here, a uh, severe overgrowth of the mandible. And we plan this case in 3D, as you can see on the right. And this is the new position of bones we made cuts on the maxilla, we make uh, cuts in the mandible. As you can see here, we move the maxilla forward and the mandible backward. And this is the final result after the surgery, with a perfect symmetry that can be obtained by using these 3D uh, technologies. And this is the occlusion of the patient. This is before surgery, before orthodontics, 
and this is after surgery and after contracts. Well, uh, what about treatment? We have talked uh, a little bit about treatments, but we need technology for many other, other things. For, um, for planning of treatments, we can also uh, man, uh, fabricate custom prosthesis, we also use navigation, we also use robotic surgery. I'll show you some examples. This is navigation. Navigation is just to uh, have an, an exact correlation between the, the, the in real time, the CT scan and the patient. Uh, we need a, a, we need a device that correlates the position of the head with the CT scan. This is the uh, this is the antenna, and this is the re receiver. And you have here three axes and you can see the tip of the tool we are, you are using where it is located real time in the, in the, in the CT scan. This uh, technology can be also, as you can see here, combined with uh, augmented reality technologies. As you can see here, this is very helpful, especially when you use endoscopic uh, devices in which you, can, you, you are absolutely blind and in this uh, this endoscopic procedures is very useful to have a navigation in which you can see the tip of the tool you are using where it is located watching the, the CT scan and if you have uh, you have the opportunity to have planning before you can mark the exact place where you want to go and this augmented reality technology allow you to go exactly where you we also uh, work with uh, prosthesis, and, and now it is important to have the possibility to build the, uh, the, 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 the exact prosthesis the patient needs. And for that, the 3D technology is very important. This is a commercial uh, company which, is, uh, in which, fa in which uh, fabricate uh, custom-made prosthesis. First of all, this is a, an, a joint that is uh, severe, severely damaged for uh, arthro uh, arthrosis. And in red, is, uh, it's painted the, the bone that has to be resected in, in surgery. And this is the digital uh, prosthesis, the, the planning of the, the prosthesis that can be fabricated very easily with milling, precision milling machines. You can mill for example, this part is made in titanium, and the upper part is made in uh, an acrylic material. And this is a plain radiograph of the patient after surgery. We do a lot of uh, prosthesis like this, and work uh, much better than the, the stock prosthesis, especially in this uh, area with, in which we have a lot of variations from individuals. It is difficult to build a, a prosthesis that works with every, every person. It is much better to have the, the prosthesis uh, manufactured exactly to the anatomy of the patient. We can also uh, manufacture a specific prosthesis. These uh, are, for example, for cases after tumor resections in which, in which you have to reject a part of the bone uh, and now you can uh, manufacture an exact uh, a spare part to uh, replace the, the, the bone you, you have lost with different shapes and exactly adapted to, to the patient. This is another example in which a patient that uh, had a resection of the temporal bone to reconstruct the maxilla and you also can fabricate this prosthesis exactly in shape you can also use mirroring uh, technology to, to fabricate an exact prosthesis for the patient. In other cases, we need to uh, replace the resected bone not by a prosthesis, by, but by a bone of the, of the patient. This is a case in which you can see this uh, alteration of the mandible. This is a tumor, and this patient had to be, uh, this mandible had to be resected from here to here. And in this case, we use a uh, bone transfer. We take bone from the left, this is the fibula, <coughs> this is the tibia, and this is the fibula. The fibula, you can take the fibula out, and, uh, 
and uh, remodel the fibula to, to give the fibula the shape of, the, of a mandible and connect the vessels that uh, of this bone to the to the vessels in the area. So it is a light bone. This is very difficult because the the, the, the fibula is a straight bone and the mandible is a, is a very uh, have a very complex shape. And here you can see the fibula in place. This is a, a, a light bone, and in this bone we put dental implants and uh, uh, dental prosthesis, so we can uh, recover the facial appearance and the function of this patient who have had a very serious treatment because of, of a malignant tumor. Now we can plan the osteotomies with the help of 3D technology. This uh, technology allows to, uh, to cut virtually the bone, bend the bone virtually, adapted to the, the shape of the mandible. Can, we can also compare with the, the, the mandible of the patient before being resected. And we adapt uh, very well the shape of this bone to the, the, the new location. And uh, we can also develop uh, surgical drill guides to cut the, the bone in the proper uh, place and also with, uh, with uh, some cuts, cuts uh, done before to help in the reshaping of the fibula in the new place. We can also use, use it not only in the mandible but also in other locations like in this case in which we have to resect almost half of the, of the maxilla of the patient. This is the cutting guide. As you can see here, we, we took this piece of bone, we used this, uh, this guy to cut the bone, to, to give this bone the new shape. Here you can see the new bone in place with these are titanium mini plates. And this is a, a grid of titanium to reconstruct the floor of the orbitals. And now we are start work, we are starting working in robotics. Robotics is a very promising uh, field for the future. We are using uh, the Da Vinci robot, which is the, the most uh, common uh, commercial robot for uh, medical applications. This uh, is transoral robotic surgery. This means that the, the robot the, uh, instruments are put inside the patient through the mouth. And the surgeon work in this console, most of you know the Da Vinci robot, this is a uh, 3D uh, high definition uh, vision and these are the, the joysticks the, the surgeon uh, used to, to do the operation. We can go very deep in, the, in the, the pharynx of the patient to do resections of tumors of, uh, or, uh, or, uh, or, uh, to treat uh, in traumatic injuries or whatever. This, this uh, robot is also used in gynecology and also in general surgery. Uh, we are also in our hospital doing uh, surgeries in, in fetus before birth using these, these technologies also. It's a very flexible robot. It is not an autonomous robot, it's a, it's a teleoperative robot. And what would be the, the future needs and what are the trends for the future that uh, feels that, uh, in my opinion, have interest to be developed in the future. The first one is soft tissue simulation. We had a lot of troubles, especially you have seen uh, simulations of patients uh, in surgeries of the face. It is very simple to simulate the, the new position of bones, but it's very difficult to simulate what happened with the face after these bone movements. We need new algorithms and we need uh, better uh, software strategies for, uh, for have more predictable treatments to show the patient what uh, happened with his face after surgery. So it is a lot of work to do in the changes in the prediction of the soft tissue changes. Uh, there is a lot of future also in uh, implantable devices. The first implantable <coughs> device was the, the peacemaker, the head peacemaker, but now there are a lot of new uh, implantable devices 
like uh, neurostimulators, gastric stimulators, food drug implants, insulin pumps, etc. And uh, in uh, our field especially, we need uh, implantable devices to stimulate uh, the muscles of patients affected of um, facial palsy. And it's important for us to have new uh, implantable devices and to develop the connection between the neurons and the electronic devices. Many groups are working on it, especially in the field of ophthalmology to develop artificial retina. It is very important, but also would have a lot of applications out of the ophthalmology, and especially in our field in, in patients affected of this uh, disease of facial palsy. And uh, there is a lot of interest also in biofabrication. Yeah, biofabrication is the combination of tissue engineering and 3D printing. So the goal is to print live tissues. And there are some experience, experiences. This is experience of Drexel University. This is a grid of live cells. But it is also possible to print uh, blood vessels. It is also possible to print uh, cartilage. It's also uh, possible to print bones, etc. And, and for us, it would be very interesting, especially for those patients in which we have to reconstruct a whole mandible, or to reconstruct an, an ear, or to reconstruct the nose. If it would be possible to print a new nose, to print a new ear, and implant this uh, new uh, <coughs> tissue <coughs> in the patient. <coughs> And also, micro-robotics is very interesting, especially uh, there are a lot of experiences, especially in heart treatments in children. But in our specific field, would be very interesting in the development of intelligent distraction devices. One of our fellows in our hospital did uh, a research project by using um, memory uh, metals in development of uh, inserted uh, distractors, but I think in the future, because of the miniaturization and micro-robotics, we would uh, have uh, intelligent micro-distractors uh, that would uh, have the same effect without the problems of the distractors we have now. We need uh, these uh, pieces out of the skin. We have a lot of, uh, of uh, problems with the scars in, in these patients and also are very bulky. So I think with the miniaturization and the development of micro-robotics would be very interesting in develop uh, devices like this. And also it is very important in, in times of crisis, <coughs> like, you know, like the times we are living now, the, the cost of technologies. It is very important to develop the cost-effective technologies and affordable technologies because sometimes these technologies are uh, too expensive, and uh, all this uh, money we spend in technologies are, uh, are uh, <coughs> very important. So it is important not only to develop develop um, technology, but also to consider the fact of the cost effectiveness and, and make this technology affordable, not only for rich people, but uh, for the whole population. Let me finish my presentation with these uh, words of, uh, of Albert Einstein. Imagination is more important than knowledge, and in my opinion, um, imagination and curiosity are the, the, the is the power of development of science. So thank you very much for inviting me, and thank you for your kind attention.